Hello and welcome back to the Premium Webinars. I'm Ollie, and this episode is focused around repeat orders. This short tutorial will demonstrate how to set up a repeat order via the order pads in the Prima back office. Now, order pads are multi-use across the back office and the Prima Go web store. Um, traditionally, they were designed for Prima Go, where you can set up the likes of favorites lists, um, the cleaning products order pad, and many more. And essentially, the reason for that was to make it easier for your customers to find the items and then, of course, purchase them uh, online. Um, as the order pads have developed, they're now able to set up a repeat order in the back office. Now, onto my live screen, you can see I'm logged on to the Prima dashboard. And what you can do to create a repeat order, aka an order pad, you can go into a new record and into order pad there centrally. So click into there, and then as you would do for a quota and order, you can then search based on account code, company name, you can even filter by the status or prospect if needs be, and you can also search based on multi, which is like some postcode searches uh, within there. So if I'm just gonna search for my test company within here, and then really simply hit create bottom right, and that then generates me a blank order pad. Now from here, I've got a few options in terms of actually building this order pad now. So you can either go to the bottom to create new items onto here, so line by line, adding on punch pockets, paper, coffee, uh, furniture items, whatever it may be, or alternatively, a quicker way, maybe via the history, depending of course, whether they've actually ordered that in the past. Now, if I show you the option for history, just as an example, if I click into there, I can then see by this account, consolidated by default for the last 12 months, what they've actually purchased. So I can search under the filters if I want to. So as you can see, consolidated then shows me consolidated by um, the quantity. So I can see, right, okay, that's the most popular item they've purchased in that period. But I can, if I wanted to search by order number, invoice, dispatch, if you have that, those kind of details. And I can also search on other things within here as well. So if I want to see that by item, then potentially this 724 could have been over 500 orders. So that then would be split into 500 different lines within my buy item search. As an example, click on that. And as you can see, it's actually broken down 100, 100, 100, etc. Um, I can also search based on contracted sales. So stuff that's on contract that has gone through in that period. I can search based on last order only. So if I'm trying to find the um, the Sharpie product from last order as an example, I can find that quite easily. Um, or I can also do, regardless of history, all contract items. So this particular one, even though it's in the history, you can actually view all contract items regardless of whether they've actually been purchased or not. Now from here, what I may want to do is do it by item as an example, and I'm looking for their most popular uh, paper products as an example, or maybe even coffee, whatever it may be. So rather than scrolling through all this uh, kind of list, you can sort it by quantity if you wanted to, and you can also search by a description or even part code within here. So if I wanna find out the paper as an example, type it into there, click search to the right, and then from here, then I can kind of whistle down and find, well actually, okay, the most popular one by the look of it is this WX code, that is the most popular. They are buying also this one, and they're also buying, what else have they got within here? Um, this one here. But actually I can see, yeah, by far this is the most popular, and this is what I'm gonna put on a repeat order for them. But of course, all this kind of information you probably already got before actually generating your order pad. So it could be the case that I decide, right, okay, actually they want two lots of paper, so they want this one, and they also want this one. So I can multi-select, and then I add items to the order pad. So as I say there, you can add on your paper products, your, your coffees, whatever it may be that they're putting on a repeat order. So I can add items to order pad from here. And then from there, as you can see, those two items are now on the order pad. If you're wanting to add on or free add, I guess, rather than doing it through the history, that new record button that was here at the bottom is now over on the right hand side for the add new, which you can see me just hovering over um, just there. Okay, so in theory, I've just built in uh, my order pad. This is what they want in every week or every month. Now from here now, once you've built your order pad, what you can do is go to the schedule order option just here. So if I click schedule order, then from here, I can give it a description. Now this is what I'll pull through to the sales order. So it's probably worthwhile putting something such as weekly order or repeat monthly order or something of that nature within here. So as an example, this one's gonna be monthly uh, repeat order. So I've typed in a description, I hit save, and then once you've done that, you can now add a schedule against it on the right-hand side. So this is where I'm defining, is it a weekly basis, is it a monthly basis? So this is actually where we're telling the system, okay, this order pad generates an outstanding sales order on such a date at such a time. So I can add schedule, and by default, it brings you into weekly. So if you wanted this to recur every week with the number one, on a Monday, then what I would do there is untick all these different options, and then at 12.30, every week on a Monday, that then would generate, or if I wanted that to be nine o'clock, of course I can then say, well actually, nine o'clock every Monday, every week, or every two weeks, as an example, you can um, change that as you want to as well. 
Now, as you can see, this one's a monthly one. So what I'll do, I'll switch on to monthly. And then from here, then I can define which months. So I can literally say, okay, I want it all the way through up until the summer, as an example. Or I can go all the way through and say, yeah, actually, every month, every uh, throughout the year, rather, I'll have that selected. I can either select a certain day. So I can say, okay, on the first day of each month, I auto generate this one. Or I can say on a certain week, so the first week, the last week, the second week, and on a certain day in that week as well, if you wanted to. I guess most typically you probably say on the first day of the month or the last day of the month or something, that can auto generate. So I can hit save on that one. So on the first of every single month, nine o'clock, that is then going to generate me um, those two um, paper items onto an outstanding sales order. Now, the beauty of that is if the customer doesn't want that order that month, of course, you can check with the customer at that point and archive the order as well. So then that, and then in that case, in May it's generated, I've just archived it, it'll then recreate in June as an example. Okay, uh, that's the repeat orders in its most simple fashion. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask away in the chat. Um, otherwise, have a great weekend and we'll see you on the next one.